Coffee coming in. This is so stretchy. I should have tuned it every day. Hang on. Let me get Dylan in here. Um, just a second. Okay. All right. Yeah. Wow, there's even people in the balcony. Forward. I think that's so he 24. Saying, yeah, yeah, he said, no, you don't get any closer. Okay. So I think that's good. Good afternoon. Welcome to Music at Noon. Glad you could be here today. Today we have folk music from afar. Last week we had musicians from where? North, North Carolina. Today we could only get them from Minnesota. And they got here, but they actually came via Oregon, Oregon and Washington and Chico today. Our musicians today are amazing. They call themselves Minnesota Folk Music Duo, and they're quite famous, especially in their own world, part of the world. They're from Minnesota, of course, and um, they make their living driving to shows, and they do hundreds of shows every year. They have done, I think he said 10,000 shows in their lifetime. Or something like that and of course they've driven hundreds of thousands of miles they were here two years ago I believe and uh, they drove here they have been given some nice awards um, they have won grants from the Minnesota State Arts Board they have been named the best acoustic performers of Twin City 
They have eight CDs here for you today at only $10 each. And you can look at them on top of the piano when you leave today. They have been performing together for 47 years. So please welcome Minnesota folk music duo. It was many miles, but we are so happy to be here. It's Indeed. just wonderful. We love this place. And I know, I, I know we've got some of the same people that we uh, played for last time we were here. It's nice to see some familiar and new faces, too. Yeah. Yeah, it's a privilege to play in, in, in buildings like this with people like you. Someone in the hall told me to break a leg, and I thought, I said, this is so wonderful. I think I'll break, just go ahead and break both of them today. <laughs> you know the old theater saying, break a leg when you're going on stage, but you don't want to really break a leg. So anyway, we're going we're gonna to do a lot of uh, Loretta's songs today. And I think, you know, they're not hymns, but I think in, in a, they're, they're so peaceful. I think this setting is absolutely perfect. And we're going to start with the one, I think it's a good time to lift the whole world, you know. We, we travel all over the country. We, we play, just played in Alabama and Ohio and Texas. And, 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 and I think people got to remember, we find out by traveling like that, that there's just wonderful people everywhere. So it's time to lift the world. You know, it really is. And that's what this song is called. Yeah, this is one I wrote called Lift the World. It's from our last CD, our latest one. It's the title cut. And we'll talk about the instruments as we go along a little bit. We've got several instruments. All my gold may slip away and my karma come to pay. I might just wake up someday and see that bit part that I play. But when that day is all through, nothing more that I can do. One thing I have learned is true, I turn and there it's always you. Shoulders Spinning gently, gently turn it over You set it down Out of the way Just like a dream The world fades away Just like a dream The world fades away Travel near and far, sail the seas to Zanzibar. I might just walk out the door and be content in my backyard. But when the miles are said and done, when the race is all run, run I meet you in the setting sun. And from there, we walk as one. You lift the world from my shoulders, spin it gently, turn it over. You set it down, it down out, out of the way. way Just like a dream The world fades away Just, Just like a dream The world fades away Trials may come to torment me Break right in without a key they may all demand to be my eternal destiny. But when the worries and the cares get too much for me to bear, you look each one in the eyes just like that. You cut them down to size. You lift the world from my shoulders. Spin it and gently turn it over. You set it down out of the way. Just like a dream, the world fades away. 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 Uh, 
thank you. Thanks so much. Thank now, you. we are folk musicians. At birth, we sign a contract. <laughs> yes, and do. That we, well, you know, when they pick you up and pat you so that you, well, that we, that's when you sign your contract. At every show, every time you open your mouth at a show, you sign that contract that we will attempt to the best of our folk music musician abilities to get the audience to sing along. Now, we've been doing this for 47 years, like Brad says, so we know many, many different techniques to get you to sing along. But here's a good one, okay? Now, of course, we're going to have to do the typical teach you your part, practice it, you know, so you're going to have to memorize your part eventually. But here's an incentive. If you sing along on this song, this will be like receiving a free medical procedure. Free medical. Free you medical, know? right here. All you have to do is sing along. But I think they're going to want to know what it is before they sign up. What, you want to mean what procedure yeah, it is? Yeah, what procedure, Curtis? Well, it's expensive, of course. Well, yeah. It costs a ton of money. And you come into a room, not as beautiful as this, but you come and you sit with people you don't really know, and you all complain from the depths of your being until you realize that what you are complaining about is very likely your own fault. You know what that's called? Group therapy. Yes, group indeed. Group therapy. And we're going to do it right here. We'll you teach you your part. You are a beautiful part. group. And you'll be even more beautiful after everyone sings along on this song. Yes, so we'll, we'll sing the chorus one time for you, and then um, we'll have you practice. It okay, we're like going to teach you, teach you your part. Okay. you got to memorize this, all right? Okay. okay. Here's our note. One, two, three, four. na, 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 don't forget this part. You know, we're from Minnesota. We yeah. got moose up north, so don't forget the moose. Okay. Oh yeah. All right. After four, let's let's do it. Here's our note. Oh, they can do palm trees here. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Ready? Everybody. After four. No, the words are na 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 na. Okay. <laughs> they got, they got right, it. Right. One, two, three, four. Na 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 na. If you do this with great vigor and enthusiasm, you will feel better. I guarantee it. I feel better. Do we have any lawyers in the audience? Any lawyers? Lawyers? Any lawyers in the audience? You are liars, but not lawyers. Not not liars. Lawyers. This this that is not a synonym. You would think this close to the Capitol, there'd be all kinds of lawyers around. Well, they're probably over there working. But, okay. but working? why he said that was because... Anyway, we the, would dedicate this to, to you. If, you. if you happen to be an incognito attorney, we dedicate this to you, okay? Because it's called Somebody I Could Sue. Yeah. One, two, three, four. Janie did it, don't play me. I learned that when I was three. I wouldn't play, she called me quitter. Made me so mad I had a hitter. Happens every single time they should arrest you for this crime. You buy a gallon of ice cream and I eat it till my thighs would scream. When you got no one to blame but yourself, oh, you'd sure like to pin it on somebody else. There must be somebody I could sue, somebody I could pass this buck. Now he passed me going way too fast And cut me off so I hit the gas I stuck to him close as I could He slowed down and smashed my hood It's not my fault, though, look at me What a stupid place to plant a tree I just backed up, what can I say? It was standing right there in my way When you got no one to blame but yourself Oh, you'd sure like to pin it on somebody else. There must be somebody I could sue. Somebody I could pass this buck. You do this to me all the time. Don't get your way and then you whine. So I get mad, don't talk for days. I'll show you, I'll make you pay. Why won't you just end this fight? Do it my way, do it right. You never listen to a word. I have the youngest to be heard. When you got no one to blame but yourself, oh, you sure like to pin it on somebody else. There must be somebody I could sue. Somebody I could pass this buck. 
Call my lawyer, life's not fair. Where's my success? Where's my share? I'm stuck down in this endless rut. Because no one will pick me up. The world's got it in for me. I burned myself in hot coffee. Lost my cash and Powerball. How come you never call? When you got no one to blame but yourself. Oh, you'd sure like to pin it on somebody else. That must be somebody I could sue. Somebody I could pass this by. Somebody I could pass this by. Thank you. You're good sports. I do feel better. Hey, I they, do they feel were better. even na 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 in the fancy box seats. I know. Yeah. It was great. You guys that are good means sports. We penetrated. Yes, yeah. indeed. They yeah. did it. How lovely. Well, let's do it. This is another one from our latest CD. You know what? In fact, let's talk about the instruments a little bit. This is a Celtic harp or a folk harp that I'm playing, the type of harp they play in Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. So it's a little shorter than a big concert harp, which are the big six foot tall ones. And the other difference between being a little smaller or shorter is um, concert harps have pedals on the bottom. I don't know if you've ever noticed that. They look like piano pedals. There's seven of them, one for each note of the scale. And that's how you sharp or flat strings on a harp and get into different keys. But I don't have that. So I have little levers on this side. When I'm flipping these levers, I'm sharpening them to get in different keys. So it's a little uh, simpler mechanism on this type of harp. And I am a little bitty guy playing an old Gibson mandolin. That's not a mandolin, Curtis. Tell us the truth. Now, there were mandolin orchestras back then. This was made in 1914 by the Gibson Mandolin Company, now the Gibson Guitar Company. But they had mandolin orchestras, and all the parts uh, corresponded to the violin family. So this was tuned like a cello. This is a mando cello. And this is another of Loretta's songs. Uh, called Beauty of the Song. The other name for the song is Duty, Duty of the Song. I feel like, yeah, songs have a purpose. We don't like songs that, are, yeah, that don't say anything, that don't mean anything. You're just breaking up and you're crying in your beer or whatever. This is a song about, um, what is this? It's hard to explain, really. I started thinking about what happens to the music when you let it out into the world. It's, hopefully it helps people in some way. And like when we're gone, maybe it'll still, I have this feeling it'll still keep uh, vibrating through the universe. So you want good things to be out there vibrating, not bad you, negative stuff. You never stuff. know when you'll write an old Susanna, you know. <laughs> yeah, they'll keep singing it for hundreds and, and, of years. And Loretta tells me, you know, everything we think and, and our songs, especially the vibrations, go into the universe and, and travel for eternity. Well, that's what I like to think, the thought and, of it anyway, yeah. And you wonder why do we don't get visited by extraterrestrials. It's like they fly by and they, they, they feel what's going on down here. And they go, nope, I, that's a bad neighborhood. I ain't going to go vacation there. Yeah, but Maybe someday, you know. Someday they'll just come, you know, come in for a vacation. Well, they might come if they hear this song because this is a, uh, I like to put out good vibrations, you know, like that 60s song. Okay. Anyway, this is a pretty song. <laughs> Sing okay. it's fine. All right, here we go. This is Beauty called... of the Song. That's it. Here we go. Will you miss me when I'm gone? Will you sometimes sing my song? Or oh, will they pass on through like hardworking migrants who have done the job and then seem to vanish like the wind? They say vibrations never end once they're sent. And so I pray the words I write over the other rhyme. All these tools that I forged were gifted to me by and large. I gathered truth from the world and waved it like a flag unfurled. I stitched together words from the pictures that I heard. 
They say my wishes never end Once they're sent And so I pray the words I write Are worthy of the ride I will miss you when I'm gone For I love to sing you songs If my words spoke to you Or somehow they helped you through Please pass that tool along that's, That's the beauty, beauty of the song. They say my gracious never end. Say sent. And, and so I pray, pray the words I write are worthy of the rhyme. If my words spoke to you, or some of they helped you through, please pass that to along. That's, That's the beauty of the song. That's the duty of the song. Beauty of the song. Duty of the song. Duty of the song. It's got to have a good song. purpose. Thank you. Well, now, Loretta here was born in, well, I'll, first I will say, I was born in Texas, indeed. Grew up in a little bitty town that became a part of Dallas by the time I left there. And Loretta is from a little, wonderful little, one of the earliest towns in Minnesota, actually called Stillwater. It's right on, on the St. Croix River, right before it runs into the Mississippi there. Her great-grandfather moved there back in 1864 and opened a, a little furniture and casket store, essentially. Yep. I got one, one, uh, I think my harp still, is still back in Minnesota. It was a little bit colder there. Even though we had like a negative winter, we didn't have hardly any snow. It was very strange. But her, uh, she wrote this song, it's about her parents uh, meeting and falling in love. And uh, she says it's a love song yeah. about her parents. And I listened to it. And I thought it was, you know, really more of a ballad about scandalous marriage. Well, there was some scandal involved. Oh, yeah. They got married yeah. in 1947. Yeah, but, you know, I mean, it, it, this sort of thing has always followed marriage around. I mean, the Romeo and Juliet, and then in the 60s it was inter interracial marriage, and now it's like gay marriage. And But in, brace yourselves. In the 1940s, it was... A Catholic married a Lutheran. Remember those days? It was really oh, a big. It was called that, a mixed. I mean, that was serious stuff. That was a mixed marriage. It was a mixed marriage. Yes, it was indeed. So they had that against them from the beginning. People thinking, "Oh no, that'll never work." It'll and never work. Also, besides the religion thing, my mother was 21 and my dad was 38, just back from World War II, and he had a little bit of money. He had a business before the war, and she just came from the farm with no money at all. Scandia, yeah, no. No running water, no, you know, no plumbing at all, and, you know, no, of course, no electricity. A lot of people were just, you know, whispering around town that that, that pretty Swedish girl, so much younger than that old man, they were, she, she was just marrying him for his plumbing. Yep. And she got plumbing because they moved in kind with his a, parents. Kind of a plumbing digger or something like yeah, that. Instead of know. a gold digger, yeah. And she did. She got lights and uh, plumbing. She moved in with their, their parents for a while. And... Uh, but yeah, they were some a beautiful people, couple. Some people really thought it wouldn't work, but somehow it did. They were married 50 years. and Love can do amazing things. I'm glad. I admit it. It's a love song, okay? It's called The Day They Said I Do. I do. One, two, three, four. One, two, He was raised right there in town, up the hill south of downtown. Nice brick house with plumbing too, his family had it built brand new. Catholic college businessman, in every way a gentleman. He crossed the sea in 44, courtesy of the World War. Spent his 
Swedish girl with quiet charm. She was born up on the farm. Light brown hair and eyes of blue. Sang in the Lutheran choir too. She filled the lamps with kerosene. Milked the cows, cooked and cleaned. She finished school in 44. She worked the fields and dreamed no more. Some said yes, some said no. She's too young, he's too old. City boy and country girl, different churches, different worlds. But on the day they said I do, they only heard I love you. Near Thanksgiving '45, he came home. Thankful he was alive. His five and dime closed by the war. So he worked at Reed's drugstore. She'd moved to town in the spring. The hospital had an opening for room and board and a little more. She passed trays up on the floors. She went into Reed's one day. He waited on her when she paid. As she walked away down Main, she stole a glance back his way. He was standing in the door to see where she was headed for. She looked down and walked away. But they knew it was their first day. Some, some said yes, some said no. She's too young, he's too old. City boy, boy and country girl, different churches, different worlds. But on the day they said I do, they only heard I love you. She was in the Grand Café when he came in one autumn day. They shared a booth, brown eyes and blue. Then he walked her back to the hospital. He took her to the matinee the very next Saturday. Suit and tie, a dress. They both wore their very best. Christmas Eve in gentle snow. He showed up laughing, ho, oh, ho, bottle of perfume in hand. Would she take him as a man? On a cold and wintry day, the sun shone on their wedding day. For 50 years, too thick and thin, the shed went past till God called him. Some, some said yes, yes some, some said no. She's too young, he's too old. City boy and country girl, different churches, different worlds. But on the day they said I do, they only heard I love you. I love you. I Thank you. So, that was for, um, I got to tell them their names. That was for Cletus and Mildred, my parents. Yeah, but I got to say, you know, Cletus and Mildred. Yes, indeed. Now, after all of the controversy and the, that they went through with their wedding, I was, I was surprised when I showed up at their door with Loretta. They weren't exactly throwing confetti, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, they had never seen anyone like you. It was, was 19, a long time ago. 1977. I lived in this little town of Stillwater and brought this guy home. And uh, 
they just thought, well, they had never seen anybody like it with a long ponytail and this long, scraggly yeah, black it's, beard. It's amazing what the years can do. I mean, I was real weird looking back then. Now I'm like normal. You know, it's like. You weren't quite as acceptable incredible. then. But, you know, they came, they, they grew to love you, though, Curtis. And uh, let's do. Uh, we could do one more with the harp. What yeah, yeah, and then we'll get it oh, some yeah, different instruments. Um, yeah, the thing with the harp is, I mean, we're taking a kind of. Uh, we're kind of stre we're we're taking it to the limit taking today. Taking a chance. I mean, harp has this magical, relaxing quality to it. So you don't want to play one too many, or after the show you got to go around and wake everybody up. <laughs> they're all happy, but they're all asleep. You know. We want to snooze off this early in the day. <clears throat> but this so, is. A I, I'm gonna have to tune just a hair. Yeah, you can tune. And I'll tell them what this is about. Is that me? Oh, anyway. Um, this is called Home and You, and I wrote this during the pandemic. It's on our latest CD, which is called Lift the World. It's got a picture of a, a globe. It's my hands holding up the globe <clears throat> through the, the beauty of Photoshop. <clears throat> anyway, this song um, came to be because we have this very, very good friend, Peter Razor, who's American Indian, and I wrote a song about him on a previous CD, and I got a call from his daughter saying he's got COVID and he's not going to make it. This was, you know, during the beginning before the vaccine He's not going to make it. I was just so devastated. He'd been kind of such a good friend of ours. So I started writing this song, and it became not just not just about him, but about everybody that's touched our lives in some way. You think of all the people in big ways and small. You might go into a store and somebody smiles at you, but all the people that touch our lives through the day. Um, so it's for everybody <clears throat> that they make you feel at home. Here. A lot of times when she writes these spiritual, esoteric sort of songs, in past years she would start out trying to write a love song for me. You know, she would say, I'm going to try and write a love song for you. And then she would, you know, she would come and play the song for me and go, wait a minute, you know. No, nope, no, nope, that, that, that. Well, it's, it can be on many levels. It can I be, mean, I am wonderful, but I ain't that good, you know. Well, it can be, a love song could be, I love songs that are on many levels. It could be so about human love. I'm her inspiration and, for the first line. A song could be uh, uh, like about human love, but also spiritual love and um, for universal give me, love. Give me a C there, lady. Cool. Right, What's this called? Remind me. This is called Home in You. Home in You. When all the world is ripped apart And light can't chase away the dark When peace can all find a way through I always find my home in you When time decides the race is run And takes away our dearest one When prayer is all there's left to do I always find my home in you you take me in, you make things right And show me hope is right in sight Just as a bird flies straight and true I always find my home in you When all the doors are closed up tight And I am locked out in the night and when the cold just cuts right through I always find my home in you when there is nothing left in store. The wolf is howling at the door. And it seems I can't make it through. I always find my home in you. You take me in, you make things right. And show me hope is right in sight. Just as a bird flies straight and true. I always find my home in you. All the world is still and bright. We gaze upon the calm starlight. There's no love more true. I always find my home in you. You take me in and make things right. And show me hope is right in sight. Just as a bird flies straight and true. 
I always find my home in you. You take me in, you make things right. You show me hope is right in sight. Just as the moon flies straight and true, I always find my home in you. Just as a bird flies straight and true, I always find my home in you. And I, uh, thank you. I forgot to add. I forgot to add one more thing. My friend that uh, that inspired that song, Peter Razor, who was dying of COVID, recovered, and he was fine. He was like 90 years old, and he did recover, and he did pass away a few years later. But um, yeah, he was anyway, an Ojibwe wonderful. guy. He was like 90. He was like fleet as a deer. It was just amazing. What a what a just a, a, an amazing guy. Grew up in an orphanage and, you know, and was despised because he was Native American. We, we have a ballad about him. We, you know, if you really, if you want to make friends, just write some ballads about people, you know, these amazing people. And, and they'll, they'll probably like you if it's a good song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, that's one of my favorite things to do is write songs about real people. And uh, most of the people I've asked to write a song about have said yes. Oh, here's, here's one of those right now. As a matter of fact, we... Did a whole album of biographical ballads. Loretta wrote it. She got a grant from the Minnesota Arts uh, uh, State to, Arts Board. Yeah. To do it, and you know, because really, when we travel around the country, you know, the coolest thing about playing music and traveling is like you, you, the actual money pay is always short. It just is. That's just a part of folk music. But the the Pay to the heart is, 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 is mammoth, you know, like being here with you today. And all, all these venues are all labors of love to, to the large extent, everywhere in the country. And if you play music for people, this is the real gift. They will, I, I was going to do that for her. Oh, I thought you'd forgotten about me. She'll probably so dock my, my pay now. Well, I thought you'd forgotten about me, I so I thought I'd do it myself. You, I admit it. I'm good. <laughs> First time in 47 years I've forgotten about you, though. <laughs> Curtis and I are uh, you know, also married to each other. We should have said that at the beginning. But, you know, when you play music for people, it's like they feel like you're their friend. They will, they will open up and they will talk to you and tell you things that they would never tell you otherwise, you know? So and, this, uh, so yeah. You, you meet a lot of heroes and you hear a lot of stories that just make you feel hopeful, you know, much more hopeful than you would otherwise. Yeah, so this, uh, this story came from, I was watching the news one night. We're in Minneapolis. Four. And it said that this woman in Jacksonville, Florida, was flying up to Minnesota to donate a kidney to a little girl in Pine City, Minnesota. Never heard of her before in her life, but she saw her just scrolling on the internet on Facebook. And she decided to te get tested. It was a perfect match, and she came up and donated this kidney. And I just, it was such a touching story to me. Just out of the blue, she decided to do it. And uh, I waited a little while to see if the operation went all right. I kind of followed the story online. And then I got a hold of her and said, I'd like to interview you for this song. Uh, that we'd like to write about you, and she said yes. So we went to Florida and interviewed her. So, you know, at first she was a little apprehensive because she'd been on the national news for that short cycle, you know, on the news, and she said, well, I don't, I, you know, this is something I did from my heart. I don't really want any more publicity for it, you know. But we, and she said, besides, you know, if you write this song, you think it's going to inspire people to donate organs to people they don't, they don't know? And we said, yeah, probably not. But then she said, well, maybe it will r remind people to check the donor box on their driver's license form. Yes, so I always like to say that. So, and, and I know you're like me. I think, what in the world could I have that would be <laughs> worth using? Speak for yourself, Chris. Oh, oh no, you've got really nice ears I don't and everything. Know, no. yeah. They say there's always something that yeah. you could donate. Uh, so anyway, you could so I Check interviewed your her. Box. Yeah, so I interviewed her, and um, and I, I said, how did you have the courage to do something like that? And she said, well, when there's good to be done, you got to do it. You don't wait for somebody else to get to it. So that became the chorus and title of her song, When There's Good to Be Done. When There's Good to Be Done. Christy Harding. Is my, is my mic okay here? Am I good with the mic, with my guitar? Brad? Yeah, that's fine. Is good? Okay. 
She said yes, picked up the phone, and she said, when there's good to be done, you must do it, you gotta wait for someone else to get to it, I knew it was God's plan to see me through it, how could I say no, when I could do it? If she was a Sarah, we would search the world. A battery of tests were begun. Up north for final ones. Six months since that day, you're the perfect match. They call the same. Sent a message to the mom and she did say, I'm Christy, I'm honored to meet you. I have a two-year-old too. I'm your girl's donor. And the mother could not find words. Christy said, when there's good to be done, you must do it. You can't wait for someone else to get to it. I knew it was God's plan to see me through it. How could I say no when I could do it? On a bright Minnesota day, Christy woke up and she was feeling pain. The very first thing she did say Is Ariana okay? She gave life that day And the purest joy was Christie's pay And she said When there's good to be done, you must do it You gotta wait for someone else to get to it I knew it was God's plan to see me through. How could I say no? What I could do it. When there's good to be done, we must do it. When there's good to be done, we must do it. When there's good to be done, we must do it. Christy Harding. Okay, he said not to go beyond five ten at the very latest. Okay, well, we got um, fifteen minutes at the very most, so. Uh, yeah. let's skip the, uh, what do you think? Yeah, let's do permit closet. All right, all right. We got time for. We're adjusting the program just a little I bit. Yeah, we, we I think our list was a little too long. We're gonna skip on. But I to, gotta say. 
We're going to skip to Karmic Closet on your program. A couple of years ago, we were up in northern Minnesota doing this really extensive library tour of all these little big libraries, little teeny libraries, and up by the Canadian border. And we, we stopped to do a radio show in mm -hmm. it's a beautiful Grand, town. Grand Marais. Grand it's right Marais. on Lake Superior. Yeah. It's beautiful. a beautiful town if you're up, up there. And we played uh, her song. And uh, what, a couple months later? Yeah. Well, several months later, the program director called me up and said, remember that day you were here, you sang that song about the kidney donation on the radio? And a man was listening from this town of Lutzen nearby. And he was so inspired, he decided to donate a kidney. And so he called the hospital and someone you know, found somebody to donate to it. Actually, um, he donated to somebody in California. And that person had had somebody that was going to donate, but it didn't work out. So that person donated to somebody else. It created this whole chain. So to be the messenger of a, of a song like that is just a real honor for us. And yeah, I called Christy up and said, see, you're getting the whole world inspired. I think a lot of great things happen to us, but that's one of the best, you know. That was the best. To, to, and then we got to phone Christy and, and, and answer that question she asked us years ago. We go, well, <laughs> by the way, <laughs> someone it, did. It did inspire somebody to donate a kidney. All right, so um, during the pandemic, did, did anybody do any house cleaning? Organizing, decluttering. I mean, our, our house is yeah. clean, but it is not organized well, very well. Yeah. But we don't spend much time there. We we load up, and sometimes we just you know. But I was thinking, man, wow, I'm going to get a, like a vacation for the first time in like decades. You that know? whole pandemic, just be a vacation, because all our gigs, and, of course, were canceled. And she came all the into concerts. the living room and she unrolled this piece of paper. It was as long as the living room. <laughs> I think there's a name for them. A, a to-do list. Oh, uh, yeah. I thought he it was called something it a, to do with melons. He called it a honeydew list. Yeah, honeydew. One, not a well, cantaloupe, a honeydew you know. list. Yeah. My word. And then we got all that done, and I thought, oh, good. Now now I can, I can now have you can my have a little vacation. vacation. But no, because oh. then I thought of all these other things to get cleaned out. Like the ins my computer, do you ever get stuff just piled up in there? And then I thought about, what about my head? The inside of my head, I got a lot of baggage in yeah, there. So I boy, started she, working on that. She and, starts She starts. Picking around with my, with my, the insides of my being. And saying, <laughs> I yeah, we're going to have to clean this up some here, you know. No, you can only work on yourself. So uh, I wrote this song called Karmic Closet. Yeah, it's one good thing the hippies did. They brought this word karmic all the way, from, karma, all the way from India. And, and, it, and it just means you, in the Bible is you shall reap what you sow, you know. But it's just another way of saying that. So this is called Karmic Closet. Gotta clean out my karma closet Do good deeds or a deposit Throw all things that I don't want to wear Old baggage piled up everywhere I'm gonna have to say a prayer Oh Lord, it's a mess in there I got words hanging from a day When I met a car in the intersection We were there at a four-way stop But he took my turn, did not stop All the words I use that day There's some hate a blush today. I've gotta clean out my karma closet. I do good deeds for a deposit. Throw all things that I don't want to wear. Old baggage piled up everywhere. I'm gonna have to say a prayer. Oh Lord, it's a mess in there. I can walk in where cobwebs still are. The things I wanted now were not mine. My friend got her a brand new car. She became a great big star, but I'd hardly feel jealous at all of Carnegie Hall would call. I gotta clean up my karma closet. The new good deeds are a deposit. Throw all things I want to wear. Old baggage piled up everywhere. I'm gonna have to say a prayer. The Lord, it's a mess in there. Clean it out there, Curtis. Lots of guilt in that closet The folks I should have called but did not Late night binges and chocolate and The times I did not take a stand I forgot my dog outside In the rain the whole night one time I gotta clean out my karma closet But do good deeds for a 
my deposit, throw all things I want to wear. Old baggage just pile up everywhere. I'm going to have to say a prayer. The Lord, 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 it's a mess in there. Oh, when I get things organized, I sweep it out, let in some fresh air. Walk the neighbor's dog a few times and pay for someone else in line. Well, then I'll polish up your shoes. I swear, I'll pay all my dues. But I'll clean out my karmic closet. The do good deeds for a deposit. Throw out things I don't want to wear. Old baggage is piled up everywhere. I'm going to have to say a prayer. Oh Lord, it's a mess in there. I'm gonna have to say a prayer. Oh Lord, it's messy in there. Oh yeah, what a mess. Two more. Yep. Yep. Thanks. We're gonna get a couple more short songs in here before we let you. Does anybody like dogs by any chance? Oh, yeah. I know one person in here does, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, I, you know, think about the pandemic now. That was a dog's dream. I mean, your owners come home, close the door, sit down on the couch, and stay for two years. I mean, there's just nothing better in, in, in the imagination of a dog. It's like dog heaven there. Yeah. And I, I've always kind of felt sorry for people that don't have a pet because it's, there's just a certain kind of love that you just might never get from a human being, you know. It's just this, this absolutely, absolute devotion, you know. And uh, so during the pandemic, I wrote this song called Get a Hound. Just kind of thinking people might, like, you know, might help them get through it. I know it helped us to have this little bitty dog sitting, sitting in between us on the couch for two years. I think we have to end it though. What? We've got five minutes. I think we have to end it this time. Oh, okay. He said be sure not to go up to five till. Uh, yeah, we got five I've minutes. got ten minutes. Okay. Is my We don't room? know what time it is, so we're, we're gonna do this. We anyway. have to stop at five till. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. We don't want to go over. Okay, what time who's got the the right time? <laughs> what time do you guys got? Pacific time, please. Twelve fifty one. We got we have four minutes. I like her. Fifty one. Four minutes. Nine minutes. We're not playing till the hour. Oh, till five okay. till. I keep we're, telling we're them over song. and over. Get a hound. Get a hound. Because people have rides coming on different things. They have to get back to work. So we're going to do one more song. And thank you so much for having us today. We have CDs over here and an email list. Take a look. and uh, We are more than happy to personalize them. Uh, they're like, with autographs, they're like 40, 50 bucks on eBay. <laughs> We've seen them on eBay. Somebody yeah, else put them on ours are 10 bucks. I thought about phoning those guys up and asking if we wanted to buy some more, you know. It's like, <laughs> but, but I think they look at them and they say, these guys got to be dead. They can't be alive. You know, this must be worth something, you know. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know. Get this, is, this is a fun thank one to end with. Thank you so much, and thanks to Brad. And all, I mean, I just imagine there's just dozens of people. And the, the lovely man in the, in the Bolo Lay that told me his name, and I can't remember it back there. Thanks to you. Anyway, get a hound. Thanks, Ready? everybody. If you'll be staying home for about two years with all your kids are all alone Quick, get yourself to the shelter or a store And bring a dog back home I feel sorry for those that don't have one Or maybe even two For everyone alive deserves true love Even presidents do, yes No love, companions brave and true. But it's for life with a waggly tail. Blow your land true. Well, maybe you can't see or hear 
or taste or have no sense of smell. Well, a dog can help you with these things and save you when you fall into a well. Or maybe you need a security guard or a nurse when you fall ill. Or a psychiatrist there beside your own couch and the dog will not send you a bill. Yeah. and Dalmatians, Chihuahuas and Great Danes, Scooby-Doo, Pluto and Snoopy. They're bulldogs for Churchill and Korg is for the Queen and lucky mongrel muff that looks like me. Now from hundreds of breeds you can select or a mongrel mutt or a mix. All the ladies cry out cute when you take a walk in the park. Now dogs can really help you pick up sticks. Sticks. There's a lassie and a bingy and a red kitten waiting for you at the pound. Happy animal shelter or a good pet store. Go get yourself. Hound. Go get yourself a hound. Go get yourself a hound. Go. Arf, arf, arf. Get. Oh, oh, oh. A, a hound. hound. Very kind. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, and uh, take a look at our. Thank you. I was going to say, take a look at our CDs. We actually take credit cards, so uh, cash, check, credit card. We'll see you over there. Minnesota folk music duo. For 47 years, they've been entertaining audiences as wonderful as you. Keep them in your mind because this is a rare event. We don't have people who make their entire living traveling around singing and entertaining audiences anymore. Everybody does it on video. These do live. And you are definitely alive. You, are, you have more stories than you could possibly tell us in a week. And you you and you have the musical art down so well you are born to do what you're doing and you are smart enough to know how to do it so it a lot of people would envy what you are able to do it's not just music is it it's common sense and learning how to do it so Please help them as much as you can. Buy a few CDs, $10 each. Guess what? If you have a 20, you can get two CDs. They make nice Christmas gifts. Fourth of July is coming. So help them out um, and do what you can. <laughs> I saw that. And, and also, another thing that I, I love about them is their versatility. They are multi-instrumentalists, and they both sing, and they can harmonize. And guess what? They wrote virtually every piece on the show. 
Loretta, I think you wrote almost every piece, and 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 Curtis, I see you have one there, and the last piece was was not yours, but. But anyway, it's an amazing assortment of talent. Please come on up. Next week, um, you will be treated with the um, Camellia City Flute Choir. Have you seen them before? Some of their flutes are taller than I am. They're probably seven or eight feet, and they're bent into a U-shape. Absolutely amazing bass and contrabass flutes. Hope you can be here next week. Bring your friends. Thanks for coming. See you next time.